Hello! In this video, we will talk about the curve board. The curve board is a Kitsus F curve editor. You can access the curve board via the button here over the time bar, or you can press the space key. The curve board is composed of the following elements. You have the F curves that are directly integrated into the 3D viewport and surround your character. The curve board is framed according to the time bar, so if the time bar displays only part of the animation, then the curve board will display that same part of the animation. The curve board menu displays the framing options here, as well as the different tangent modes here. For users who prefer to work with a curve board separated from their 3D viewport, you can access the two views curve board layout through the bottom button here, so it's this button, or you can press F3 on your keyboard, like so. When you activate the curve board, you will notice that curves will be displayed behind your character in order to provide a clear and nice workspace. When you select a curve, you can see that they come up over your character and then you are able to see your curves and work on them. The different curves are displayed this way. So I'm going to go here where I can show you all of the different curves. So we have red for X green for Y and blue for C axis. The orange color curves correspond to the I case and reverse foot angles. So pull vector, roll, twist. The key triangle icons correspond to the move channel. The round icons correspond to the rotate channel. And you can see that if I select the rotate channel, then we do not have the different uh, handles, but we have dots, and that is due to the fact that Akitsu's rotation system is in quaternions, which is different from the move and scale channels, which do have the handles. The key square icons correspond to the scale channel, which we have here. And the key diamond icons, like this, correspond globally to the angle channels associated with IK and RF controls. These simple diamond icons that don't have a break in them correspond to the pole vector. The vertical splitted icons, like this one, correspond to the reverse foot roll angle. The downward diagonal icon, like this one, corresponds to the RF twist angle, and the upward diagonal icon, like this one, corresponds to the RF bank angle. When you activate your curve board, you can notice that the transform window also changes here, and it displays the corresponding curves. Here you can choose to display and hide the curves you want by selecting on the small icons. So if you ever forget uh, which color and shape is for what you want to change, then you can also look here in the transform menu. Now I will show you how to select curves, keys, and tangent handles, as well as to navigate through the curve board. For this, the shift key is important. For selection, hold down shift and left mouse button to select any curve, key, or tangent handle. You can also hold down control and left mouse button to add to your selection. And you can hold down alt and left mouse button to remove from your selection. To modify a curve, a key, or a tangent, first you must select what you want to modify. Position your mouse on it and then hold shift and left mouse button drag up and down to modify the values. So you can either do a key, 
tangent handle or the whole curve. And you can see if I move down a key or move up a key, the value of it displays as it's changing. So for a handle, you hold down shift and the same, move around, or you can select curves and move them all together. Please keep in mind that you can only change values of keys by moving them up and down in the curve board, not their timing by moving them left and right. To change timing, you can either drag your keys here or in your stacker window. To scale a curve, first you must select a curve and then position your mouse in the area that you want to scale from. You hold shift and right mouse button, drag up or down on the curve to scale. So if I scale it from the center, you can see that the keys on the very beginning and end scale up and down. If I scale from the beginning or end, then the center is scaled. So the scale results will depend on where your cursor is positioned uh, when you start to drag. For curve board navigation, you can hold down shift and middle mouse button, drag up or down to pan vertically. To resize vertically, you need to have nothing selected and press or hold down your shift and right mouse button, drag up or down. Make sure to not drag on a curve and drag on an empty space in order to scale the view of your curves. You can also use your middle mouse wheel, so you hold down shift and you scroll with your middle mouse wheel. You can access the curve board right mouse button menu by holding shift and right mouse button clicking anywhere on the 3D viewport. Here you can see that you have a lot of options. If you select a curve, you have the isolate and focus on selection option. You can also isolate on move channels, isolate on rotate channels, isolate on scale channels, isolate on angle channels, which is the IK and reverse foot channels. You have show all curves, which displays all your curves again and you have select all curves, which will select all of these curves, and you have select controller. Select controller works for when you have multiple controllers and you are working on one single curve and you want to select that controller easily. So you select controller and you can see now that the specific controller that that curve belongs to will display. When you open this menu on a keyframe other than rotate, so here if we select one of our move channels, you can see that I now have break tangents available. So what this will do is it will break my handles and I can then uh, move them around like this. You can see that they are broken by the dotted lines and I can also unify the tangents afterwards. Now let's go over the curve board rubber menu. At the top we have the framing features. First we have the frame full animation button. Uh, this feature frames the curves in the 3D viewport from highest to smallest value of all the displayed curves regardless of the current selection. Uh, then here we have the frame key selection button. So here if, if we are scaled in and select this, then it displays all of them. But if we are, we have this selected and we select this second button, then only those selected curves will display. Next we have the tangent modes. Here we have the linear interpolation mode. This creates straight segments on selected keyframes. For example, 
like so. And then here we have the spline interpolation mode which creates smooth curves. It is usually the default interpolation mode in 3D animation software. So if we straighten this and then we select this one, you can see that we get the curves back. This third button is the clamped interpolation mode which flattens the curve between neighboring keyframes when their values are identical. So here you can see we have a slight curve between these two frames. And if I select this, then because they are identical, this will be straightened out. So the fourth tangent mode here is the special interpolation mode concerning eye case and reverse foot controls. It is the curve default mode when you create eye case or RFs. And in this mode, the curve interpolation between two neighboring keys automatically switches between spline, spline clamped, and linear, depending on the IK and FK combination, meaning that passages from red IKs to white IKs set the values for those keys. So if we have here, you can see that my control is turned red, which means that the IK on my reverse foot is turned on, and here in this fifth frame it is turned off. So you can see here that when it is turned on this tangent seems to be broken so it might be in linear and of course it is in my IK spline but if I was to turn off that IK you can see that now this has turned into either spline or spline clamped. And again, that depends on whether your IK is turned on and or turned off and in which position the IK is. And so again, that works for both reverse foot controls and the same with IK, regular IK handle controls. So here you can see it is turned on and I have some linear parts here. And if I turn it off, now they are turned into smoother curves. Remember to turn on your IK controls or make them red on keyframes where your IK resolution is needed such as for locking limbs down uh, for collision or contact slides and leave the other IK controller keyframes unlocked or leave them white when they are not needed and the, re the same goes for reverse foot controls. You can see here that I have my foot sliding on the ground and so my IK for that reverse foot is turned on and then once the foot gets off the ground then I have the IK for the reverse foot turned off. And that is the curve board.